Hey guys, Tisha here and I'm annoyed and I'm back with another Sister Wives season three review. I recorded this and for whatever reason, it didn't, yeah, it didn't do what it was supposed to do. So here I am and I'm recording it again. I'm gonna try to give you all some of the same energy that I had in my initial recording. So here it goes. We begin this episode seeing Isabel and Brianna both at their homes packing bags, getting ready because they're going to be moving in with Mary. This move is happening because Christine and Isabel keep bumping heads and Cody suggested for Isabel to go to Mary's because Mary is more organized and Isabel responds to Mary. I think that this kind of explains one of the reasons why Isabel coming to Flagstaff and Mary not knowing may have disappointed Mary. It seems like they had more of a relationship than we even understood. Brianna, on the other hand, went over there because she found out that Isabel was going over there and she wanted to go too. Cody thinking that this was the answer for her to move to a fun place, for Isabel to move to a fun place instead of helping Christine kind of rein Isabel in and discipline her shows me how hands off Cody was at times with some of the kids. Christine says that she bumps heads with her eight year old and she said that she's a sweet, obedient girl to Mary. Who else had this type of problem with their parents at eight? Put it in the chat if you did. I didn't. Um, but I guess everyone is different. I don't think that the answer is just sending her off to Mary's. I do believe that Christine maybe needs to come up with a different approach and Cody needs to support her. We see Mary and Leon preparing the room for the girls. They're taking different boxes and stuff out of the girls, adding another bed it looked like in there and really fixing it up. The parents talk about how they should refer to the kids that aren't biologically theirs because we know that a lot of times you hear Cody's uh, say that's Mary's child and those are Christine's kids and Robin's kids and Janelle's kids. But the the wives feel like it's a little disrespectful and that Cody feels like it creates degrees of separation. I don't understand how he feels like it creates degrees of separation because Cody is the main person that does this. I don't hear, I've heard the wives do it, but they don't do it as much as Cody does. Even to this day, Cody says it a lot. I feel like he created the separation a long time ago. Robin claims that another reason why she's sending Brianna over to Mary's is because she doesn't want Mary to have empty nest syndrome. So you didn't want Mary to have empty nest syndrome in Vegas, but you didn't have a problem with her having empty nest syndrome in Utah, not Utah, in um, Flagstaff. Because we know that Mary at one point did not have any contact with anybody. Mary has no children living in the home with her. Mary has no grandkids. Mary has no family out there. And Robin doesn't call her as stated in recent episodes. The only time she hears from Robin and that family is for holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas, and probably when it's time to film outside. So it's interesting that back then you cared enough to try to help her not have emptiness syndrome when she still had a child in the house, but now you don't care. Robin thought it would be funny to rub in the fact she was laughing while she said this that she wants to keep Mary busy with her kids. I didn't think it was funny. We see the girls head over to Mary's house. They're really excited. They get the big reveal. They're thanking Mary. They're hyper. They're jumping all over the place. And Mary finally eventually gets them down to bed. One thing that I love about Mary is Mary is organized. And I love, love, love that. I'm very organized myself. So I get it. You ask me where something is in this house and I could tell you in the kitchen, third cabinet from the right, facing this way. Yeah, I'm that person. Any of my friends, they know. Family too. It's over 100 degrees outside and Christine tries to fry an egg in a frying pan outside and it doesn't work. They use this as a segue to the family going to Big Bear Lake in California. 
we find out that they're going for a 4th of July weekend. This is when I got confused because I thought the kids in the summertime went to Wyoming for two months, some of the kids, and these kids were there. So for my people who know about Vegas or may live in that area, when does the summer begin and end for you all? Because summer, two months, that would mean here, if it was here, that would mean that the boys were still in Wyoming. So how were they able to be a part of this? I just felt like the math was kind of weird, but I don't know, you know, what the timetable is in Nevada. So it's 5 a.m. the next day, and Cody is hoping to be on the road in an hour. We see all the teens sitting there just watching Cody run all over the place, as he always does. The teens are cranky. We find out they aren't happy because of the move, and they say from the teens that this is causing them to fight a lot more. I just feel like, of course, they're not happy. They're acting out. Their parents took them away from their friends. They didn't give them any real type of warning and they took them away from each other. These kids lived in one home prior to coming out in a whole nother climate, in a whole nother state where they, sur they were surrounded by family and friends. And now all they have is each other and they can't even see each other daily like they used to because they're in different homes. And even though some of the homes are in walking distance. They all aren't. And the different moms have different schedules. They say that they have the family thing twice a week. But do we even know if that's something that they continued the whole time they were there? If their moms are having a rough time, how do you feel like the kids are? Of course, the kids are having a rough time, too. Janelle speaks about how all of her teens are struggling. But Hunter seems to be having the hardest time. And he's angry. Oh, Hunter, it's okay, Hunter. You're going to grow up to be an amazing human being. I said this earlier because I wanted to look it up because I know Hunter is a big deal. Hunter, when I looked it up, attended the United States Air Force Preparatory School. He graduated in May of 2016. Then he graduated in April from the United States, States Air Force Academy. And then he went on to grad school, you guys, where he graduated recently, I believe it was, from John Hopkins with a master's in nursing. How amazing is that? Hunter has a job where he was on the front lines during the pandemic where he served this country and he ended up being a great human being. I am right to have a soft spot for Hunter. I just do. I can't help it. Even now when I see him on social media, I'm like, oh, Hunter. Because I really felt bad for him when he was going through this depression of this move. We go back to Hunter in past time saying that he doesn't like anything in Vegas. And Maddie says they're stuck in hell. Man, oh man, these kids are really going through it. But we know over time, even though they had a rough start, that things did turn around for them and they did make some good friends. They had to They head to the campsite. It's rough terrain. We see them going through all these running roads and stuff and then they stop because there's this big stream that they have to cross. I don't know if it flooded or if it's always there. I'm going to assume that there was a flood of some sort. Christine takes a chance and she decides to drive through the water. She makes it through and then all the other vehicles follow because Cody made it clear that he didn't care about any of the other vehicles. He was not leaving his vehicle there. You would think that that was some like top of the line uh, vehicle that if he just he could not he did not want to leave his his vehicle there. Hunter is frustrated and he's talking to his mom about how they should have already reached their destination. And Janelle's response is that they didn't realize that it would take that long. I don't understand how they don't check the length of these trips before they go and factor in stops and all of that because they know that their family is large. So they should kind of have it understood that, okay, this trip is going to take, let's say, five hours of the five hours we're going to take three stops, da, 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 da. Like, it should be, it should be mapped out. But 
they, even after all these years, don't have that figured out. I'm not even a member of the family and I knew it would take forever for them to get there. So I don't understand why Janelle didn't know it. All the teams are over it. It's not just Hunter, but in the confessional, he definitely seems to be the one that is being singled out more. And I feel like it's because Hunter is being more vocal. It's the end of the night. They've unpacked their uh, cooking roasted hot dogs and marshmallows. And according to Cody, all the whining stops after they started eating. I don't know if I would call it whining, but you know, Cody has his words for his, his things. It's the next day. Some of the family is supposed to go fishing. Other parts of the family are supposed to go into town on a hike. And then after that, they're going to meet up, go to the lake and then go out to eat. And of course, this too, them getting ready to just leave the campgrounds takes forever because of how unorganized this family is. Hunter is sitting there and he's ready to go and he's getting more and more frustrated because he's expected to do certain things before he can go, or I guess everyone is, but everyone isn't working, including some of the adults because Mary and Robin are putting on their makeup. They're at the tent putting on their makeup and Cody is sitting in his chair watching them. Hunter points this out and he gets in trouble. What, honestly, what do they need to do makeup for? They're in the woods. What What is the makeup for? Janelle tells him to stop complaining about what others are doing and focus on himself and set the example. I get what she was trying to say, um, but I could still understand Hunter's frustration. Cody then describes Hunter as a raging testosterone monster. I wouldn't have used monster as a part of it. I understand that Cody is frustrated with him, but referring to him as a raging testosterone monster, I don't I don't think that was right. I think if he would have said that about uh example Robinson, it would have been an issue, but because it was Hunter, some of the parents could just be okay with it. I would have corrected him had I had been in that setting. He has an attitude with his parents, according to Cody, he thinks that his parents are stupid and he is God. Where the hell did Cody get that from? I don't understand why he would say that he thinks that he's God. Maybe Cody feels like he's God. This young man is frustrated because he's ready to go fishing. And the best time to go fishing is early at dusk, early in the morning. And here it is. We know that they started getting ready at 10 and he still hadn't have left, hadn't left. So it's no time what's no telling what time they got out there on the water. I'm sure that he is not the first person to think that, you know, our family is taking too long because the other parents are feeling that way. Not parents, the other kids are feeling that way too. Hunter then says. Maybe everybody should get off their lazy butts like him. It was disrespectful because even though he tried to act like he wasn't talking about the adults, he was talking about the the adults as well. But it was truthful nonetheless. <laughs> Janelle tells him in a very stern voice, never be disrespectful like that again to the adults. We then hear from Robin and from Janelle that they believe that he's had issues accepting Robin. I'm sure that Robin joining the family was an issue. The kids were not included in this conversation, much like the adults weren't because Mary and Cody, and Robin started doing things before Janelle and Christine even knew. So yeah, the, the, the children feel some kind of way. Yes, Hunter feels some type of way. Not only uh, is there another mother, but he's losing time from his father. There's a lot of things that go with this other than just Robin. Robin says she feels like Hunter is looking at her like she's not his mom. That She thought blending families would be okay, but it seems to not be okay. Maddie and Hunter in the confession with the other teens uh, say like they feel like the parents are wrong for always thinking that they're being disrespectful. Logan yells, cause you are. 
And Hunter asks how. And Logan proceeds to tell us all the ways in which Hunter is disrespectful. Which one of them is saying, hey, mom, what you going to do? What you going to do, mom? What you going to do if I don't do better, mom? You, you're going to ground me, mom? You're going to take away my phone? That's disrespectful. And if I was Janelle, when he did all of that, I would have did exactly what he asked me if I was going to do. I'd ground him and then I'd take away his phone. Robin's kids... Uh, go with Janelle and Hunter to go fishing. And as they're fishing, Janelle lets us know that this is the first time that she's had alone time with Robin's children, that she doesn't do that often. So, Cody spent all this time courting Robin, going to see Robin, spending time with Robin, spending time with Robin's kids, taking time away from his other wives and his other kids to do so. And he didn't feel like it was important for his wives to develop relationships with these children as well. We're going to hear later down below how Robin doesn't feel like her kids are being included. Well, Robin, it's your fault and it's Cody's fault if you feel that way because you're talking about a family who was established for 16 years when you came into the picture. The dynamics of that family is very different from the dynamics of you. You also never lived in one house with them. So of course there's going to be a slight disconnect there. It's not something that would happen in a matter of a year. Especially if you only see each other a couple times out the week, if that, it, it's just not, it's not realistic. They go out on the lake, they have a good time. Then they go out for pizza. As they're getting out of the car, we don't see it, but we hear that Peyton hit Brianna in the eye. Now, we don't know if it was intentional. We don't know if it was an accident. We just know that Mary, Cody, and Robin are extremely pissed off. We can tell by their response. But Robin isn't going to worry about addressing it the way she wants to address it. Because remember, Robin's a sweet one. So what I think Robin did was she knew that Mary would have her back, as Mary always does. And Mary's the one who spoke out and said something. Robin says that Peyton and Garrison pick on the little kids all the time. I don't know if it's Garrison or if it's... Um, Peyton that yells that we, we do it to each other but I do know that whichever child yelled it they were telling the truth because think back to some of the things that we've seen we've seen Dayton and Brianna fight we've seen Robin listen to Dayton and Brianna fighting the same way Cody was hearing it and we, we saw Cody step in and try to blame it on the fact that they were frustrated about the move and packing. That's why they were fighting. So it's okay for them to fight from this move, but it's not okay for the other ones to act out and, and have a problem. It gets dismissed for them. We've seen Aspen and McKelty fight because Christine let us know while they started doing it with Cody there, this is something that they do almost every day. Nothing was said about that. We've seen Peyton and Gwen fight. We've seen Peyton and Isabel fight. We saw Cody, I don't remember which one he hit, but, but he got told not to put his hands on girls. It's not just Robin that's had this problem, but because Robin is new and because Robin likes to be needy and because Robin knows that if she complains about this, it will cause some type of a wedge because the mothers are going to protect their kids. And also Cody is going to want to cling to her more and protect her and watch over her. She's going to complain about it. Mary says, as she's yelling, this has been going on for, for far too long. These are your brothers and sisters. Whether you like it or not, you need to start acting like it. She's yelling at them when she's saying it, speaking in a stern voice. None of the moms, not even Cody, say anything while she's doing this. I just don't understand if, as Mary said in her own words, this has been going on for far too long, why it's just now being addressed. Is it just now being addressed because one of Robin's kids is crying? Because like I said earlier, I've seen the other kids cry. She wants backup from the moms. Christine said that she feels like in confessionals, the timing of this was completely off. That yelling at them was not right. To each his own. All children do not respond the same way. I know that. I found out later in life that my child does not like when I yell. So as a result, when he's in trouble or 
anything like that. I try not to yell at him. And he, I've given him permission that if I'm yelling at him, he's allowed to say, mom, can you calm down a little bit? And I don't take it as disrespect because we've had talks about this. Christine points out that maybe what she could have done was she could have waited uh, to just address Peyton one-on-one -on -one because she feels like Peyton was the issue. It wasn't everybody else. Maybe she could have addressed it in the car. I think that uh, Christine preferring to talk to Peyton about it sounds reasonable because we don't know what truly happened. We just know that she got hit in the eye. We don't know what came about it. Not not excusing it, but it might have not been intentional, but we're never told if it was intentional or not. Cody said if Mary wasn't involved, he wouldn't he would have just taken them back to camp because he 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 was up to here with with everything. The, the day was just awful. The teens say that they're fighting a lot because they're frustrated with Vegas. They don't have anything there. Maddie says that they know Robin's kids come from a different family, but it's not fair for them to be the only ones that are making changes, that Robin's kids need to change too. And I completely agree. I think that Maddie nailed it on the head. I think that Robin earned or got whatever from Cody in Cody's eyes, preferential treatment very early on because he just thought she was a pot of gold. And as a result, he did not treat his other wives, family, children, whatever. He didn't treat them the same way. And Robin's kids were afforded things and given things that the other kids weren't given. They were shown a lot more grace than the other kids. Robin says that she can see the difference of treatment with her kids. And she's worried about it because at a certain age, they can choose to leave and be with their biological dad. That at this point, she has a, a year and a half until Dayton is 13 and he could decide that he doesn't want to be with that family and he wants to, to go live with his dad. I don't understand where this is coming from because we've heard from Dayton multiple times that he loves this family. So did Robin's kids say this or is this coming from Robin? Robin started this mess about her children being treated differently. When she's the one who has held them back, she's the one who's coddled them, she's the one who's prevented them from doing things. If it's a year and a half until Dayton is 13, Dayton was old enough to go to the ranch with his other brothers. Why didn't Dayton go? I understand that Dayton has Asperger's, but Dayton is capable of working. Dayton is capable of doing things. We've seen him do it. You use the Ashburgers as an excuse when it's convenient. Why didn't he go with them? Why isn't Dayton allowed to be around the other mothers like that? Why did it take for them to go camping and them to go fishing for him to get an opportunity to be alone with one of the moms? See, Robin has mastered looking like she's the victim. And this is a part of her doing that when they're not looking at the full picture. Cody is concerned about the bullying in his family. He's at a loss. I don't understand how this incident gets labeled as bullying and how he didn't address all of the bullying prior. The bullying, if there was bullying, if this is bullying, didn't just start with Robin's kids. Siblings do dumb things to each other. Cousins do dumb things with each other. It's plenty of times when my first cousins, one of my cousins used to fight like cats and dogs. I have a cousin that stabbed another cousin in the forehead with a pencil when we were little. And for the longest time, my cousin kept saying it was me. And I was like, no, I didn't stab you in the, the forehead. I was the cousin that sat on you and squished you. There are things that we did as children. It doesn't have anything to do with them not liking Robin's kids. But that's the, the narrative that Robin uh, is going to push. And at some point, she probably made her children feel this way because we've already seen her in recent years lie and reword things that the moms had said, like Christine saying she wants to keep things the way they are turned into Christine saying she didn't want to have nothing to do with her kids. Remember? So I think Robin began all of this and we're seeing it. None of the other wives speak during this whole piece about the bullying thing. 
I think that is very telling that they didn't speak. I think very early on they saw some things and they realized that it, it didn't make sense for them to talk because Cody would soak in what they're saying and probably use it against them later on. They go to watch the fireworks. It's raining off and on. The fireworks don't start until they're getting ready to leave. Overall, this episode just showed me and reminded me of how Robin started doing that web. It also reminded me that her children were not raised like the other children and that that did more harm than good. I'm a firm believer that they probably were picked on at some point as siblings do, but I think that it got magnified because it was Robin's kids. And as a result, knowing how sensitive, especially her, her youngest is, it trickled down into other areas of the family. Thanks as always for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. This is a little bit shorter than the first one that I did, but I still wanted to give you all something. Until next time.